we've seen immune-based therapies uh, started in AML many, many years ago with initially checkpoint inhibitors. They didn't show much activity as single agent, and that's why we combined them with other agents, hypomethylating agents, for example. And we have seen slightly higher responses with this. However, now the field is getting more exciting, and we're moving forward not with uh, one PDL1, CTLA4 checkpoint inhibitors, but now we're talking more about bispecific antibodies, uh, similar to what we've seen in ALL, but now more in ALL targeting CD, CD123 and others. We have uh, new monoclonal but he's targeting CD47. So CD47 is responsible of the do not eat me signal. So it's a kind of macrophage stimulating uh, targeted therapy that we hope can uh, can induce higher higher response rate and high risk disease, particularly patients with TP53 patient. And now we're testing this at MD Anderson uh, in combination therapy with hypomethylating agents and venetoclax. Uh, also, we we are now evaluating CAR T cell therapy, CAR NK cell therapy uh, in patient with relapsed refractory AML and different subsets. We have different different uh, CAR products available, and we have seen interestingly that those CAR products, or we are restricting, I would say, kind of their use in patients who have low burden disease, up to 20, 25 percent, 30 percent of blast. So patients really who have a very proliferative disease, very high disease burden, 50, 60% of blast, those patients are not optimal candidates to receive to receive those type of immune therapies. So I believe now moving forward, uh, it's gonna be important how we're gonna sequence those. So maybe the antibodies will be interesting to see the response rate in combination with hypomethylating agents, venetoclax, while the other NK therapies or CAR therapies, for example, will be interesting to see how they're going to fit uh, in lower disease burden patient with residual disease other therapies and how to sequence all of this in terms of pre and post stem cell transplantation and then further maintenance therapy. So it's kind of really exciting to see this and I believe in the next year or two we're going to have more exciting data on this.